very interesting. We'll get into it later. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this show going. Let's get the show on the road. This is where you want me to come in. Hey guys, this is Omar Colum, your host with the most. Thank you for coming to the Mo Show and tuning in. I'm here with my host, Woo. Mike Latchin, with his hand up in the air. Thanks for that very much. And today we're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about getting paid, invoices, when to send them, how to send them, what's going on, right? I like this topic, you know, because this can apply to a lot of people in our industry, Omar. Now, do you have any disclaimers? So, oh yeah, let me start with one disclaimer. I'm sorry. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for bringing that up. Listen, for anybody who's got soft skin out there... Um, you're not gonna like this, but uh, you know Mm-mm. I'm a firm believer that most of the time it's on you. You send that invoice late. Okay, so send your invoices on time. It's send very them important. On time. I, I I hate to read it there. Send them on time. What is the issue that you're sending it late? How is it not an easy process? Why is it so difficult? You know, people. There's a word called procrastination. I'm very familiar with it myself. So if I do it, I'm sure other people do it. But maybe that's not the main reason. Now. What are some other reasons why you wouldn't get paid? So yeah, so let, let's let's look at it on the other side, right on the on the AV side. If AV you, is the talk. If you're going directly to that client now, the end client or the production company, they may not have gotten paid yet. Plain and simple. Oh. Maybe you didn't get paid because they didn't get paid yet, or maybe you're not getting paid because you did a shitty ass job. Let's be serious. <laughs> not that you shouldn't get paid you should still get paid something but i mean you know hey maybe you needed to go in there and negotiate something because you didn't do so good okay okay I'm saying that's not the case some of these other companies you know there's a rumor mill out there that they can actually put your money into say some type of uh interest account that can accrue over say a period of 60 to 90 days maybe even and that they won't pay you on that time because they're actually trying to make a little extra buck once they get paid from the client what is uh, what is that true or false? You know, to what level? I don't know, but as a business owner, that that is a, a feasible thing to do. There is uh, interest savings accounts that you can open up as a business, it's kind of messed so up. you can make money on it. So you know, if you think about this on the on the business level, right? Uh, these guys are doing tens of thousands of dollars into an account. Why not throw it into a savings account? I hit my thirty day mark. I get a little little extra money on that money I just put in there, and then I just pay you after the fact. I don't or, like it. I don't like it. Yeah, or they do what some other companies have done, right? They they say, "Oh, you gotta pick up your, you gotta pick up your check." Ooh, all right. That's the one that's a kicker sometimes because that one hurts. It was easy. That one really hurts. Now, is it possible that these companies just have horrible accounting departments? Oh, of course. Yeah, like their people are hired, they get paid yeah. to do this job, they it, show up at eight in the morning, and they just literally cannot accomplish their tasks. They all have horrible accounting departments, or uh, they don't have a real horrible. one. Horrible. They have a fake accounting compartment. <laughs> it's just a, an email that all the invoices get sent to that someone manages that isn't in accounting. That's a possibility. Counting right? at, but it's going to yeah, it's John going to John over there. there. Yeah, you know, some no, Joe Blow is just like no. okay, whatever. No, okay, all right. What about this robbing Paul to pay Peter? You know, you hear that a lot. What? what give me the premise of that. So, robbing Paul to pay Peter is, is a simple concept. Um, it's talked about a lot in the sales side. But robbing Paul to pay Peter is just that, for whatever reason, X Y Z company has already used all the funds and profits from that show that you were on, mm. and now they were taking profits from another show to pay you for your your time. Is that commonplace? Because it sounds like they're not managing their money properly if they're doing that. Uh, so I think each company is at a different point. You know, we, we can't we can't judge. I'm judging company. <laughs> <laughs> we we shouldn't. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Well, we shouldn't judge companies year twenty versus companies year one, right? Okay, brand new companies. They're trying to get their beak wet, so to speak, and they're not right. And they may do things they, right. Right. Mm-hmm. They may not know the best ways to manage their money. And a lot of guys, it's hard to say. Hey, I'm going to separate my finances of of my budget for labor and the budget for gear and two separate accounts so that I can make sure I pay my guys on it. They're not doing that year one. Year one, you're saying, I made this much profits. This is my expenses, right? You're just mm. doing big numbers. Bigger companies are probably doing, you know, labor is one 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 bank account and gear is another bank account. And right. those, get, those get separated. But they can misappropriate their funds. You know, they're putting rims on their 20 foot, 26 foot box truck Correct. instead. You know, that's appropriate. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, short of the horrible accounting departments, uh, how clear do you need to be when you uh, start off with a client about being paid, what your rate is, a half day, a full day? I mean, a lot of the stuff you would think gets talked about, but really, unless it's discussed beforehand, you could get blindsided when you send an invoice in and all of a sudden totally the agree. client totally is saying, uh, you know, we didn't discuss this, therefore we're going to do it my way. And if you don't like that, then, uh, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and I think that that's something <laughs> that should be discussed ahead of time, mm. not after the fact, because after yeah. the fact, you're, you're not gonna, only going to get pushback on it, but that paycheck you thought you're getting may not be the same check anymore, right? And then you're pissed, but they're also like, 
we do not care about how you feel about this. And a lot of companies are very brunt and upcoming, and they'll tell you about that. Um, I think it's not the right thing to do. Now, that kind of segues to another topic about being right or wrong. You, I, We've both been on job sites where people come in, and uh, maybe you have a job that legitimately will take four hours. But there's certain uh, people in the crew that know that if they stretch it a little bit more than that four hours, they can maybe make it to a full day, which in our industry would be most companies, anything over five and a half hours. Uh, what are the moral implications of that? Is that something right to do? And if you were, say, head of that business, no. would you frown upon it? <laughs> I mean, no. The question <laughs> if you knew is no. I mean, for, it. Me, for me, it's no. For everybody, it's different, right? But again, yes. that goes back to year one versus year 10, year 20. If you're year one, listen, you might want to, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You're going to look like you're milking the clock. But I'm going to tell you as the guy on the other end, the guy, the producer, the technical director, the guy that's paying the bill, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to see you working slow and I'm not going to, I'm not going to call you next time because i'm like oh, i don't want this guy who takes three hours to build a screen it takes 40 minutes what you do want to do is work hard and fast so that that guy says hey i need this guy's number directly so i can call him for more stuff because i know that I'm, I'm gonna get him to work for me well and on top of that that class more likely to hook you up right so okay yeah do, do you yeah. Do, do you not have mm-hmm. any clients to say hey come in for a 10 hour day and then you end up doing a you know an eight hour call but you still get paid for 10 and it's not a big deal or vice versa what about a five hour call you come in and you still get paid for a 10 hour day, you know, without even having to talk about it. They just hooked it up with you because yes. they know like, Hey, you're a good worker. And when I need you, you help me out. Okay. You brought up one specific point about going straight to the client. And some people in our industry would say that's a big no, no, <laughs> you know, you're working for, let's say a labor company and there's a production company in between that and the end client. Now the PM on the show for the production company likes you, but they're not hiring you directly. At what point do you say, you know what? It's okay if I work for this client directly because they like me, this labor company, production company, whatever it may be, they don't necessarily need me, and I'm going to get paid more. Now, who are you pissing off, and is it worth it? So, again, that's a that's a branding issue, right? For you, that's a branding issue for who you are as a person because then if you do that constantly or if you do it all the time, you're going to look like, hey, this guy's always a, this guy's always just bouncing around using my – using my uh, I, don't, I don't know how to word it – using my what? sources to, to, to gain for uh, yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but it's a double edged sword because now it's like, hey, I don't want to hire Joe Blow anymore because he's gonna just talk to this other guy to my client directly and make me look bad. But now that guy's got the hookup, and it's kind of a human expected thing to do. But it, is. it should be frowned upon, and it should I don't think people I don't think it should be that. frowned upon. I, 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 I frown. Yeah. Oh. I think it's a per basis because sometimes that it, it just happens naturally. I'm frowning right now. I have a client who I worked for as a freelancer for a long, a very long time, who now I work with directly, and is one of my biggest clients. And it was a natural conversion from working with labor company X to working with him full time. And it wasn't like he poached or stole me. He literally, I say, let me get your number. I would like to book you more often. Did he ask the labor company for permission? <laughs> that's between, no, but, yeah. but that's not you. That's between him and the labor company. Yeah, at that point. but I feel like most of the time, either way, uh, it's an important thing to touch upon. I think it's a gray area. How about that? It's so gray. It's definitely a gray area. I would say it's towards the darker area because, you know, it's not talked about enough. It's not. And, and, and the things you want to get there, right? You want to go from labor company to production company to your own uh that's the name of the game you know started from the bottom <laughs> <laughs> and now we're here there we go. Okay. uh in terms of that and another thing you know there's a lot of people out there that'll you'll book them or they will get booked let's say uh two weeks out three weeks out for a single day show maybe a full day uh then something else comes along where it's a multi-day aka more money uh-oh, type of uh-oh. event okay i see where we're going with this now it's happened to everyone um especially when you're newer in the industry what does that say okay. to the client that say is getting canceled on? And if it starts to happen more than once, where do you draw the line saying, "Listen, this just does not right. fly"? So, and again, I, I want to say I, I see the, I see the pros and cons to both of this. I get that as a freelancer, you want to make more money, so you want to take the bigger gig with the mm-hmm. more pay. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other end, though, the producer side or the end client side, your reputation is going to start to fall because now I can't rely on you. Doesn't matter if you call me ahead of time. Thanks for being honest with me. Thanks for telling me. Mm-hmm. I will call you another time. But if this happens three times, four times, I'm just not going to call you because you're always going to sell me out for somebody else. Versus if you constantly stay to your word, I'm more likely to book you no matter what the scenario is. And I'm more likely to work work harder f- to book you because I know that, hey, if I book Omar Coloma or if I book Mike, I know they're going to be there no matter what. I, like I don't that. have to worry about. But I think what 90% of the time what happens is people cancel short gigs for long gigs, and it's just not right. And that affects your brand. You're chasing the dollar. And That's you're not, your you're reputation. Not building, you're not building your reputation, correct. I know you don't do that, Omar, personally, but it happens. It ha- And it has. To me, it's happened. 
and I've had to call and I've and I've always recommended somebody either my skill set or better because it does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't, but most of my clients know if I book 99% of the time I'm going to be there unless it's a family emergency, and even then I'll like communicate extensively with you, or something comes mm-hmm. up, and again I will communicate extensively and I will try to find a replacement or or anything I can to help make that easier for you to, to replace. I got me. you. I got you. Now getting back to this giving uh getting solutions to getting paid. Now I have a personal. Yes. Thing where I'm uh, about 100 days overdue with a certain client. Okay. I've done a lot of stuff. I've called them. I've emailed them. I've PayPal'd them, sent carrier pigeons. I've done a lot of different things. No responses. Uh, I do not know the next step to take. Oh, I've t- <laughs> I would never work for this company again. Oh, I, don't, okay. I, I don't care. I did a great job, by the way. It was nothing to do with performance issue. Okay. Uh, what's my next step legally you in terms help. of uh, you know, going after my money? Okay, so the easy answer if you're a business is to write it off as a loss, right? That's the simple, quick, and easy. If you're not a business, though. If you're not a business, mm. and you've already said, I think, that you sent emails, you called, you... Yeah. You did none of that? I, I saw you shaking your head, but... No, I, I did it. I did all that. You did and all that. Some, I and like, then some. And it's been 120 days, we said? 180 days. This is back in February. Days. Seven months ago, so 180 days overdue. So my... my <laughs> Dude, that money's not coming. <laughs> 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 Damn, I had that hope until this talk. Oh but my. um, but no, that's wow. let's let's see. So, you know, th- this goes back to you, right? You, as a as an independent freelancer or as a, as a contractor, whatever, however you want to call mm-hmm. yourself, or labor yourself for this industry, you need to be responsible of your own your own self. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck, hey, I'm sorry. We should have another talk and how to how to work that. You know, how to use QuickBooks, how to use invoicing, how to. How to make a spreadsheet to account for your finances, but if you're if you're if you're learning to get to that point, right? Like so now we're we want to get to that level, right? And I know you're a numbers guy, so you're like, dude, <laughs> I do spreadsheets, you know, ten Left seconds, and right? But not everyone does spreadsheets, quick, right, right. all that. They send in, you know, an email in the body, and they'll and say, they're I worked ten hours. Yes, so. and and you know what? I've been there. I was there. I I, I grew better from there, and I I moved to the next topic. But I think that. <laughs> <laughs> that particular scenario, it's just a hard one, man. I mean, you've done everything you can. But uh, I'm screwed. Be, well, besides, I mean, you, like, I, um, I'm not highly recommending this, but you could go to their office if it's close enough, right? Okay. If it's out of state, that's another thing. But this, one, thing. this one might be. But, uh, again, I, I wouldn't recommend to myself even to do that. Right, right. Because then you're showing up and it's just like uh, I feel like not confronting people face, face-to-face is right. – you know that's the way to go. Don't. Um... I think. I think on paper though, you've done everything you can, right? Okay. You've, you've done the emails, you've done the calls. I would just continue to do it. Maybe, maybe just. I mean, eat shit if you can. Just do an automatic reminder every fucking week. Yeah. Blow, blow them up like a credit. So busy. I know. You know. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take that into account, and I'm going to try to do the best oh, you I know can. What you could I'm going to get back to you on that. Hold too. on. You know what you could do though? You could send an email saying, "Hey." Can we work something out and I, and offer? I know I know you I don't want to hear this. I can show you the email list on this computer right now. It is listen. Extensive. I know you don't want to hear this, but think think of a businessman, right? You either get no money and write it off if if you're if you're a business, or mm-hmm. you do the second thing, which no one wants to do, but you can sometimes do. Send an email saying, "Hey, I will lower my rate if you can pay me today." Oh my god, yeah, because now half it's the now money it's late, right? It just at least give me the half today, and I'll anything, lower it. If anything, I should tack on interest and really you should. hit I them. totally agree with that. But they're ne- if they're not paying me now, why would they ever pay me more? I'm going to get back to you on that, All and right. we're going to hope there's going to be a better uh, outcome next time we speak. Stay tuned <laughs> on the Mode Show. Yeah, no, that'll be a good topic for another time, though. No, so <laughs> to give a better answer. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. So, Omar, next thing, I have a little lightning round question where I'm going to ask you a oh, few shit. questions. Things are going to come in quick. If you want a little bit more time, let me know. Put your hand up. Okay. But it's just basic things. Some are AV-related. Some are just kind of, you know, a little I bit of fun. I would my best of my ability. You know, I would hope you do. <laughs> just going to wing it. Yeah, it's just, listen, that's life, right? Okay. Yeah. So, and some of these are coming from personal experience, uh, especially the second one where, you know, it's amazing having some things. And a lot of them are road-related, which we do a lot of traveling, you and I both, and yes. a bunch of our peers. So, uh, if you're on a, let's say, a setup day and you have a really good crew all the way from technicians to the stagehands to everyone, but you have like a person in charge, which are, whether it's a project manager, technical director, say that guy uh, is lost. Right, right. But the crew is really good. Would you rather have it that way or the guy, the leader is really good, but your crew is lost? 
I'd, mm, I'd rather, for me personally, I'd rather have a good leader and a, and a mediocre crew because a good leader will train those guys. Okay. And, uh, and what about for, level. let's say, a show day where you have a show caller not calling I'd, the right shots? I'd want the complete opposite. I want a badass crew because <laughs> the show caller can, you know. At least the show will go on. At least the show fine. will go on, yes. He'll be calling the wrong cues and you'll be like, nah, I know not to You do put this. three key guys in the right roles, your show will go no matter do what. Do you listen if you know the cue is wrong, that's another thing. That's not a quick question. But if the cue is wrong and you know it shouldn't be something that's switching, say he's calling for a different take and you're running a gig, do you go with what he is saying or she? I or think, do you do with what's right? Again, I think if for me personally, you go with what's right. Unless the client is very... You know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, not mediocre, but someone who's always on top of you. You like, can tell if these show callers know what they're doing. Yeah, if someone's yeah, a micromanager. It's very simple to yeah. tell if they've done it before, if it's their first rodeo, Correct. of course. Sometimes it's better you just take over. And, and you'll feel that out in the shows. With each, each person okay. is different. You'll feel yeah. it out. Great. So next one is uh, I was just in Colorado Springs, and I stayed in this place with an incredible shower. Ooh. Like, I'm talking next level. Okay. It had the fountain from a head like a waterfall. You have it had a view the other outside? one on the wall. You had a view. You could do hot, cold. I was in heaven. I didn't even show up. You know, I was in shower all day. So <laughs> the bed, though, uh, the bed was also awesome. But if you could have a good bed and a mediocre shower or a great shower and a mediocre bed, and I know that sounds silly, but this is an important thing. Great shower, mediocre bed. Really? Instant. Instant. I take long showers, man. I take long I enjoy the shower. The shower is my sanctuary. Oh, okay. You're, it's my quiet space. You are speaking to the course here. yeah it's my quiet place all right excellent uh laser projector or lamp projector laser all the way 100 yeah. percent. yep and, that's and just... i started with lamps i started with barkles those, those are my those are my bread and butter for a long time but yeah no never again i mean if i have to i'll do it because it's my job i mean they're still out there and <laughs> yeah you see it's the... my job exactly if i got to, okay i'll do it <laughs> you see but, the flex 20s all over the place i know still and, there. and the, right. the, they're great they're great projectors all the christies are great barkles are great panasonic's are great but the lasers they just have better contrast better lights better Better colors, better, better they turn everything. Turn on quick. They, they go, turn yeah. on quick, dude. On, it's on. It's on. There's not There's this no heat up. Fifteen minute warm up yeah. and oh, you know, let it run I for a little it. bit. Thirty minutes so warms up for the lenses. I love it. No, just run. Okay, excellent. Um, local, all things equal. Local work or travel work? All things equal as money, correct? As money. Okay, correct. so all things equal, travel. Really? I I, I feel you I make, don't like sleeping I, in your own bed, huh? No. Well, the thing is, I, I, I mean, make of course more. you do. Well, so so listen. So I, you know, if I'm in Miami. And I drive down to a show. I got people parking. That's that's an expense. Gas. Gas is an expense. Possibly food if they're not. Most likely you. food, right? If we're in that area, if you're in New York or Chicago, say, might be a little bit different because you could just walk somewhere. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's an expense. If I if I travel out of state, my tickets are paid for, my hotel's paid for, my luggage is paid for, my I'm paid to be out there. My my expenses of meals are paid for, or a percentage of them are paid for. So it's 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 a money maker. It's not a not okay. a loss. I understand. I like personally sleep in my own bed, but I do travel. Quite a bit like you and uh, plenty of people we are friends with. Okay, that's an interesting one. I'd I'd agree to disagree on that one, but right. uh, you know we all have our own personal. I might need to, I might need to buy your bed. <laughs> My bed's nice, but it's not that nice. I want to stay in town. Hey, <laughs> I got the comfort foam. All, all right? right, it's very important. <laughs> uh, this is a personal one: PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. What God, the PlayStation? Come on. Bro, I'm off this show. Really? Listen. <laughs> That that's a Xbox. That's Xbox. Where I draw the line, Omar. It's okay <laughs> for all you non Xbox people. Though, stay tuned in, please. <laughs> no, that's listen. That's a personal preference. I like it. Um, so, getting back to getting paid on time. Wait, do you do? play Halo? You played Halo? No, that's Xbox, man. Come yeah, on. exactly. I still have PlayStation Three. And what do you play? What's what's, what's legendary on PlayStation? Battlefield, Call of Duty, Red Dead Auto, Xbox, 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 NBA, Xbox, 2K, Madden. Xbox. It's on Xbox. Damn. Okay, I, I'm I'm stumped. Yeah. Exactly. I'm stumped, Omar. Nothing. You did it again. Guys, I've got nothing. <laughs> Listen, uh, pulling everything full circle and talking about getting paid on time and what to do if you're not. The main thing I think is working with trustworthy vendors. Uh, most of the that. companies that I think both of us work for, amongst amongst others, is not first timers. You're working with companies that you have solidified a relationship with, and yes. that uh, you know basically when you're going to get paid and how things are going to come around to you. So, yes. Uh, but if you're working with brand new people, which I do every now and then, uh, you don't know if they're trustworthy. You could ask around. You can ask around. That's what I would do first always. Uh, obviously, sending your invoice and everything correctly. On time. Job numbers, everything they need. If they have a specific request or even a template they give you, which a company a while ago did that. Some companies do that, yep. But you should you should have your own. You should have your own method, your own tools, right? Like, for example, I use, I use QuickBooks. I have a, my own invoice that I created. 
with the help of a lot of friends because I don't know a lot about Expo. But I have an invoice that I created and I use I use that invoice and I use either that if I have to or I use QuickBooks and I and it's all through my phone. It's, it's very quick and easy so that there isn't this delay and I mm. you know, day per day I add, you know, to work this day, these many hours here and then everything gets populated automatically. My client goes in there. I've already had a communication with his client, so I know what's going on. Okay. All right. Well, Listen, a lot of people can maybe pick up some of the things you're talking about and maybe get more prepared and uh, organized around what you're uh, throwing out at them. So that's quite interesting. Um, as far as getting paid on time and what to do if you're not, it all comes down to just being uh, better at your own skills, not procrastinating and just making sure things uh, come full circle. Yeah, manage your money, learn, learn your expenses, learn your ins and outs, learn your cash flow really. Cash flow is easier said than done. Even if you uh, are bringing in a decent amount and you're making a decent living, cash flow, you know, it's yeah. not something they teach in school. It's I mean, not, and I think it's, it's I horrible. never took a class uh, in high school uh, that was telling you how to do taxes or I didn't take a class in high school or send college. an invoice or, you know, uh, we can't change that. That's not what this talk is about. But it is something that has to be taught, and you do have to learn that if you want to be able to get paid and manage your finances properly. So that's super important as well. Uh, any other major points that you think are important right now to mention, Omar? I've got I got one more point. Um, I just want to bring up, you know, for the guys transitioning right now that are listening to, to uh, tuning into us or listening into us. Um, if you're going from that labor side to that direct side, I know we didn't talk about that too much in this podcast, but ah, yeah, if yeah. you're going from that labor side where they're doing everything for you, you need to you need to come to the position like now, like as soon as you're done with this podcast. Not yesterday. Yeah. That <laughs> now that you're going direct, you need to have your W nines ready. You need to have your invoices ready. You need to have your whatever way you're filing yourself for taxes ready because no one's doing it for you anymore. You're no. on your own. Sort of you know, I hate to say it that way, but you're on your own. Ask your buddies who are doing it because they'll help you out, trust me. It's very easy to get up and going, but you need to have the stuff ready. If not, you're going to be the one suffering, not not the other company. Okay, very interesting, very interesting. And that kind of wraps me up to the final point of uh, learning. You know, I didn't uh, get to the spot where I did without learning. You did it, and the people we work with as well. Uh, we also didn't do any formal education, short of maybe some classes uh, industry here specific, there, yeah. industry specific. But besides that, there was no formal education. Uh, it is around the people. It is about the people who surround yourself with. If I didn't know the people some of the people i started off with in this industry i wouldn't be where i'm at right now you know it's not so much of what you know is who you know yep i agree with if that if i 100%. know every single switcher and lighting console and audio console out there but i'm not getting calls right from companies to doesn't give me matter, work yep. it doesn't matter you can be really good at what you do but if no one's calling you to work as a freelancer you're still sol if anything else goes i think that was really great how you explain that you know getting paid on time what to do if you're not paid on time you got to work with trustworthy vendors if you're not sending your invoice on time you're not getting paid on time this is the one thing that i think needs to be drilled into the ground because a lot of the time people just don't understand the fact that listen these accounting departments whether or not they have their stuff together they're getting invoices from everywhere if you don't got your name in the right place if you don't have the show if they have a job number they included these people have enough stuff to deal with, and they're working with other vendors and other companies. They need to have all this information correctly. And I've done that type of work before where I can tell you it's very hard to sort through it. An email without a subject line is your worst enemy. <laughs> Never, ever send an email without a subject line when you're sending an invoice. Uh, if you I do, totally agree with that. If you do, good luck about getting paid. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, then you're guessing, like, what what the hell does this go to, man? Ah, no subject. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a good point you touch on, too, that, you know, one more thing I'd add before before we we wrap this up for the night yeah, sure. is that I think another thing you guys need to need to um, kind of realize is that when you're when you're freelancing and you're independent, you you need to be able to absorb some of these these um, industry norms. I, I would say right, and, it, and I hate to say it that way because it, it mm. shouldn't be like that, right? Yeah, it should be two weeks or thirty days. It shouldn't be anything longer than that. But every company is different, and, and the easy answer again is to either you know do it as a loss or hey just drop the client because they're not paying you on time. Drop them. But it's like I'm saying, done. these yeah. are said and done, right? But but what I want to get to, sorry, before, just to wrap this up tonight, what I want to get to is that you need to be the responsible one. You need to run your, your yourself as a business. You need to save up money for those scenarios. You need to have money in in in, a, in your back pocket to to say, hey, I can hold off a little bit on this. I got money to cover myself. You shouldn't be living paycheck to paycheck. If you are, you're no. not running your business right. Or you're just not <laughs> working for the right people. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah. But between a combination of those two i think those are both valid points absolutely that's really great omar i'm glad we had this talk uh i do want to 
bring up uh, AV Educate and all the great work that they're doing. Oh, thank you, man. And I appreciate that. <laughs> absolutely. You know, you're a pioneer in our industry, and uh, learning starts where you want it to. Yep. So if you want to learn, you got to make those steps. It's not just going to fall into your lap. I totally agree You with can't that. play with a board in a, in a ballroom one day and expect to be a lighting designer the next day. Yep. It takes you time. Have to, you don't have to do formal training. I took zero formal training for the skills that I've accrued over the last five years. But... A resource like AV Educate, I could have used five years ago. So I wish it was there. But now it is. And I think on a later podcast, that's something we'll delve into a little bit more and see what ways you can explore uh, learning and bringing your talents and abilities to the next level. So, yeah. So I, first off, thanks for me. I really appreciate that little that little plug-in right there for AV Educate. That's, that's great. And and you nailed it. I, I, that's exactly what I started for. When I did this, you know, what, 10 years ago now that I've been doing this? 12 years now? I started AV Educate because I didn't have that kind of source that I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to create it off of what I already have. And hopefully other people will help me build this up together. And I've I've gotten great feedback on it, great following. I've heard great things from it, even out of state. So I think you've done a great job there. I'd like to thank you for uh, giving me a great talk today. And I look forward to another one another time. Yes, awesome. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in to The Mo Show. I'm really glad you guys came in and tuned in with us. I hope you guys learned a lot. Hope today was the day you learned something new. I'm um, doing next time to talk about how to make money as a freelancer. Ooh.